Okay, today we'll go over what we did last Tuesday in class, um, that is the association rule mining, and I'll go through every single step that we covered in the classroom from the beginning. So for you, you'll have to go to Dropbox, to your own um, Dropbox folder that you created for this class, and go into 6870 that I shared with you, go into R4 for Association Rule Mining Week 3, and grab this titanium R. Make sure not to take it out of this folder, just copy it into your ITLS um, Dropbox uh, folder that you created for yourself, okay? So just copy that over and copy this over as well. So titanic.r, which is the R script, and titanic.row.rdata, um, which is the file actually. So I will be using this folder, so don't pay attention to me. Once you copy it over, right click on it and select R Studio. Make sure not to select R, okay? We need to use R Studio. So once you open it, the first step you know already is set up the session to the directory. So go to set working directory to source file location. Okay. Once that's over, you make sure we look at the first line. So the first line is loading the code. Before whatever we have done, we were using CSV files. So we are doing read.csv. This is a different file. It's a um, R data type file. Therefore, um, R has different scripts to read in different type of files. And here we're using load. Okay. So make sure that this link to your file is correct. In my case, I'm using my Dropbox, therefore the tilde um, forward slash. Then after that, I'm using 6870, but yours will be your own um, Dropbox folder name. That might be ITLS class or whatever you named it. The rest will be the same again for us. So R for association rule mining week three, Titanic wrote R data type. So once you click on it and run it, and you see everything is correct, you have four variables and this many observations, go ahead and go to the next line. You know that you can double click on this and see the file itself, but to make it shorter and easier, especially when the observations are a lot, you can just do head titanic row, which is the name of the file, and you will see the file's um, top six lines along with the head of line. So you know that there are four variables, like we saw it already, class, sex, age, and survived. So we go ahead and attach the file, and I hope you remember why we're attaching the files. If you don't, go back to the previous class and um, remember. So next line is, after attaching the file, we go ahead and find the matrix. Do not use this line of code, install packages, because sometimes it gives you error, like you can see here. Sometimes it has hard time to find the packages. So um, go to Tools, Install Packages, and just manually type this up. Make sure to wait until the stop sign is off and you get the sign. Go ahead and find the A rules package as well. Okay, install that one as well. Right, and make sure to run this line of code because Installing the package and calling the library are two different things. So we need to still call it to be able to use it in this session. Okay? We don't have to install it ever again, but every time we use it and it's a new session, we'll have to call the library. Okay. So now we are going to go ahead and use the algorithm, and that's the a priori algorithm. So this is a variable name that we give, whatever. This can be anything we want. In this case, we used it rules because it's pretty self-explanatory what it is. Then we use the a priori function from the a rules and our data file. To know more how to use the a priori, you can go ahead down here, type question mark and a priori. And it'll give you a little explanation here in the help tab. So to go back to the previous tab is plots. Just leave it like that. Okay. So now um, when we run this code, we get a bunch of information that does not make any sense to us because this is the algorithm. This is information that we can't really explain. So that's why we have to inspect the rules, our rules. Okay. So we run this line of code and we see that there are 27 association rules. Go to the top 
and I will go ahead and explain you one line so that makes sense. So the top, it, this is your associations, as if this is your A, this is your B, <coughs> excuse me. Then there's your support, confidence, and lift. To understand this better, I typed this up here for you to see. Okay, so let's look at the line four, the rule four, this one. And let's see what it says. So it says 90, 19% of the cases, and this is a support line. So that talks about support is both A and B, and it doesn't matter the direction. So it can be redundant as well, and we'll look at it later. So 19% of the cases have adult, so have um, adult and female. So sex is female and age is adult. And this column, confidence, tells us um, how confident we are in this association, so that's Confidence shows how confident the algorithm is in regards to the association, okay? And then lift is the measure of the performance of a target model, and um, in this case, predicting or classifying the cases, 19 cases. Lift is the ratio. So we can say that, let's look at number eight. Try to guess it yourself. What is it? So 14% of the cases, we are very sure confidence is one, which is 100%, that every time there's a class, class crew, 40% 40, 40 of the time there's a um, crew as class, it is adult as well as age. Okay, so we go ahead and continue. So here we have 27 association rules, but we are not interested in all of them. We are only interested in the survived no and yes cases. So we want to get rid of the rest of them and just look at the survived yes and no. Therefore, we need to set that in our appearance, as you can see right here. Again, this is the a priori um, function, so you can look it up with question mark, right? Okay. So we run this. It just ran. Now we need to sort it by the lift. Sorting it by the lift. And then to see what happens, we need to inspect it. And we inspect not the rules only, because the rules was the initial one. That was the whole data file with all the associations. We wanted only a selection of it that has only survived yes or no. So we called it sorted, rules.sorted. Therefore, we need to inspect rules.sorted this time. When we inspect it, we see that there is much less. There are 12 association rules, and all of them have the survived, with everything survived. Can you see? Okay. So go ahead and look at the support and the confidence on your own. Then, um, as I talked about um, earlier, there's a the the direction does not matter here, so it can be redundant. So we can see that. Um, in one place when it's talking about the class second um, and as a variable B survived yes, it can swap back and forth so it can be the same thing presented twice. Therefore we need to uh, find the redundant rules and get rid of them. Um, here is a script that prunes them, gets rid of the redundant rules and here's the script that finds them. So we go ahead and run this portion of the code and we can see that it shows four rules that are redundant second fourth seventh and eighth so you can go ahead and look at them on your own right here in your window um, to understand this a little better so let's look at it so it says the second one is redundant and the reason is that so first rule says class second age child survived yes second rule says class second sex female, age child, survived yes. You can see that the second one is way more uh, specific than the first one. So both of them, one of them is redundant. Um, the second is redundant, it gives you more information. However, however, it is a um, super rule. And to see more about that, you can read right here. Generally speaking, when a rule such as number two here is super rule, have another rule such as number A1 and the former has the same or a lower lift, 
the former rule, too, is considered to be redundant. It is very specific, so it is included in one. Hope that makes sense. So we need to get rid of the second one, because it just says the same thing. Okay, the same with four, seven, and eight. Those are redundant. Okay, so we found our redundant rules. Now we need to get rid of them, so remove them. We go ahead and remove them and we inspect the rules. Again, we are respecting rules.pruned because we assigned that variable name to our redundant um, function when we're sorting and getting rid of it. So when we looked at uh, rules.pruned, we can see um, that there are eight of them as before, um, which is kind of weird. So I will need to look into that. Um, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. So initially we had 12. Sorry. <clears throat> so initially we had 12, and then there we found that there are four redundant rules. So after we removed them, we have only eight redundant rules. Uh, not redundant. Eight rules uh, without the four redundant rules. Okay? So... Um, to see the difference, we can go ahead and to and visualize it. We need to run this, install these packages. You, I already have all of them, um, therefore it does not give me any problem. But I can do this. Um, install this package. It worked, so I can go ahead and call that package. Remember, I said you need to install and call that to be able to use it. So I called it, and now I'm plotting. As you can see. This is your um, rules uh, plot, confidence here, support here, and lift here. However, if you count these numbers, there are 12 rules. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, 10 rules. <laughs> that is kind of weird. So there's one that's repeating, that's under another one. Um, but we wanted to plot only the rules that pruned because we wanted to get um, all the rules that are not redundant so we need to change this code type pruned dot pruned and run it and we can see there's eight of them only so this is the end of it and then um, this is all we did in classroom so look through your assignment and try to do the same um, that's presented here in this code. Just remember if you have some questions about the function you can call the function by question mark and then the name of the function and then you'll see how to use it. Usage example is right here and every single argument right here is explained if it's required or if it's optional to use and what kind of information needs to go into it and at the end there is an example as well, just in case, if you are not sure what kind of data to put in there. Okay, this should be all. If you have any questions, post it under this discussion.